Hi, I am Dr. Sridhar Kalyanasundaram. Welcome to my channel. This video can be applicable both to the parents of babies in NICU as well as the junior members of the team and the nursing staff. I will be discussing briefly about apnea of prematurity. I think uh, you might have encountered uh, the longer lecture uh, on apnea of prematurity but here my focus is just the clinical aspects of apnea, what apnea is and what the treatment is for the same. So uh, premature babies have uh, immature uh, breathing center in the brain. They also have structural variations in their airway. So both these uh, contribute to uh, cessation of breathing at times. Uh, we have two types of apnea, uh, central apnea and obstructive apnea and we have a combined variant called mixed apnea. So uh, apnea is nothing but cessation of breathing for more than 15 to 20 seconds or if it is shorter than that period and is associated with a drop in heart rate called bradycardia and a drop in oxygen saturation called desaturation episodes. It uh, happens very frequently in the more immature babies and uh, as a result of that we start using prophylaxis against apnea of prematurity in the babies who are under 30 weeks of gestation. Between 30 and 32 weeks many of them get the uh, caffeine as well. You can either start it directly at the time of extubation and then give the subsequent doses uh, depending on whether the baby has apnea or under 32 weeks are justified to give caffeine to all the babies. So uh, caffeine is a stimulant medicine and it helps to reduce the risk of apnea of prematurity. We keep these babies on monitor so to pick up these episodes. So we have the cardiorespiratory monitoring, the ECG leads on the chest as well as the pulse oximeter. Both of them give the heart rate. The pulse oximeter reads the saturation as well. The babies who are relatively stable may not have the ECG leads and usually since the pulse oximeter gives you both the heart rate and the saturation, if the probe is measuring it properly, that is adequate. Uh, the incidence of apnea is more in the more premature babies. Uh, most of these babies are in some form of respiratory support in the initial period and usually the apnea starts manifesting more when we are reducing the support. Uh, sometimes apnea happens in a baby who is breathing on their own and we need to start them on CPAP or uh, high flow uh, to support and very rarely we may need to intubate such babies because they have become so hypoxic that their respiratory drive has dropped significantly. So uh, we should be keeping in mind that premature babies have a risk of apnea. We also have problems related to reflux. Uh, there is a controversy whether reflux actually causes apnea, but reflux does lead to drop in oxygen saturation, which can be phasic because uh, reflux is nothing but the milk coming from the stomach into the foot pipe. And then when it reaches the upper part of the airway, which is quite close to the uh, stomach in small babies, the distance physically is like four or five centimeters in that case. They have a reflex closure of the airway called a reflex laryngospasm. So this causes them to go uh, bradycardic because the closure of the airway is a vagal response. The vagus nerve controls the heart rate as well and the heart rate drops quickly. When the airway closes, uh, the lungs of these babies are already uh, not fully normal because they are premature babies. Many of them have uh, evolving chronic lung disease. They have just recovered from the initial respiratory distress and uh, so their lung ability to cope with the brief period of airway closure, the lung volume comes down. So they start getting more apneic episodes and so that's why uh, in my previous video on how to manage apnea clinically, I had mentioned about uh, increasing the pressure in such babies for a brief time to recruit the lung volume and then manage. So uh, I will discuss separately on uh, caffeine uh, as a medication and the different settings in which you would use caffeine. Uh, for the parents who are watching this video, I would like to reassure you that most of the babies outgrow the apnea by the time they are coming close to the discharge time and we are able to stop the medicine by 34 weeks and then when the baby goes home, you don't need to be worried because um, even if a very transient episode happens, the babies recover on their own as the maturity of the respiratory center is better. We have to still follow the precautions that your doctor has given you in terms of uh, feeding times, feeding volumes, position and so on. Uh, overfeeding is usually not a good idea. Don't change the feeding pattern much. And uh, if you have any concerns, obviously discuss with your doctor before the discharge. I hope this video is helpful. Thank you.